Kaspersky just released new versions of all of their home products, and they wanted us to do a first impressions video on day one, so I've had access to this for a while, I've been checking out some of the new features, and as you can tell, we've got a dark theme now. First off, I have Kaspersky Plus, which is likely the successor to Kaspersky Internet Security, and right off the bat on the home screen we've got some interesting changes, we've now got a timeline of events, pretty relevant, if we click on view all, you can see that we've had a fall antivirus detection of 2,809 files. Regular day in the office for me, but in all seriousness, I think this is a feature that most of you are going to appreciate. This allows you to look up detections in the past pretty easily. You can also just click on these events to get a deeper view. Another thing you might notice is that we have a network view of all of the devices connected to our network, which I think is pretty cool. You can immediately tell if somebody else is using your Wi-Fi. We've also got two main options here, one to speed up your PC and one to open Kaspersky VPN, which is now legit because you have unlimited traffic with Kaspersky Plus or Premium. I have been testing this out alongside some of the more mainstream options. It's been on par in terms of performance, sometimes even better. Some websites will just not open because of DDoS protection or something like that. But in most other cases, this is legitimately fine. This is a perfectly usable VPN. You can choose your locations. You've got options for streaming. Ah, and I just noticed when you're connected, it shows an indicator on the home screen. That's pretty neat. Now if we click on the second option, PC speed up, it's going to search for temporary files, Windows registry issues, and you can actually clean them up with just a click. It's not very detailed, but a quick and easy way to remove temp files. I think that's useful. You've obviously also got your scans. I like the fact that we still have all of the customizability within the deep settings, so you can set a security level, extreme optimal load, you can select the action on threat detection. And the same applies for all of the advanced security settings. One of the trends I don't like in modern times is the fact that products keep losing features because it's like, well, only 1% of people use this feature. This is not like that. Even though they have simplified the UI quite a bit, if you go into the actual settings, you are still able to access everything the way it was before. You have the same amount of control. Some of the views are actually improved. So for example, Apple Application control is now intrusion prevention. And if you click on manage applications, it shows you a beautiful view of everything that's on your computer. And I must say, this is one of my favorite implementations of intrusion prevention in a home product, because it's not too aggressive in the sense that you don't end up creating a lot of noise or pop-ups where you're being asked if every application is okay to run. But at the same time, you have the ability to limit certain applications where they're not gonna be able to cause massive damage, but can still run. I've had some applications that were unknown, like a CSGO demo manager that I was using. It was classified as low restricted, but I was still able to run and use it. And all the time I've had no pop-ups, so that's pretty nice. One of the other features I found pretty useful was the app updater, so you can actually search for updates for all of your applications installed. Interestingly, it's put under performance, but this can actually help you get rid of vulnerabilities, which also serves the security function. You've also got some additional tools like a duplicate scanner, you can search for unused apps, and you can look at the drive health of your SSDs. Normally, I'm not a huge fan of adding a ton of tools to a security product, but in Kaspersky, I think most of the inclusions are actually sensible. It just doesn't feel like clutter even if you don't use it. Now, they've also got a backup and restore feature. You've got current activity, this kind of like a process manager, and you can actually see the digital signatures associated with each of the process and their popularity. There's also a similar feature to view network activity that I really like. This is pretty much your sys internal stuff with a nicer UI, and I really appreciate it. Now, my general thoughts on the UI itself. I think it's very neat. It's a very clean UI, and they've managed to make a dark mode that's not too aggressive. This is also, I think, one of the few applications that looks just as good in dark mode as in light mode, which is surprisingly hard to do if you look at other applications. One thing I really don't like, though, is the scroll bar in the main UI. Naturally, when I saw it, my instinct was to resize the window, but guess what? You can't do that. You can't resize the main UI. You can resize other windows that you open, like this one, so I can easily resize this but if we go back to the main UI, I can't do that. Not sure why that's the case, but other than that, I actually really like the UI, I like the different categories, and I like the levels. 
So you've got the simplicity for the everyday user, but you've also got really neat tools for those of us who do want to play around with it. Another feature they have is an identity wallet. So this is kind of a combination of a locker for your files, as well as a password manager. If we click on add document, it's gonna open it up. I have mixed feelings about this. On one hand, it does combine two different applications into one, so I like that. But on the other hand, when I generally use a password manager, I typically prefer a web-based extension. This does have a web extension that you can use for autofill, but most of the interface is on the application that needs to run in the background all the time. A similar thought about the UI is that the password manager UI and the VPN UI are actually separate from the main application. Now, the advantage is if you don't want to use the VPN or the password manager, you have the ability to uninstall those independently. The downside though, is that you have a different UI and this one doesn't even have dark mode. Some trade-offs there, but in general, I think the design is really appealing. And on first glance, every feature I've looked at seems to be kind of useful. I'm curious to hear your thoughts in the comments as to whether or not you think you would use these tools and if you like their inclusion. And of course, we will be testing it against malware like we usually do in a follow-up video that we'll be premiering on the channel in a few weeks, so make sure you're subscribed for that. And if you want to grab a copy of Kaspersky Plus or any of the other options, there will be links to that in the description. Don't forget to like and share the video if you enjoyed it. It really helps me a lot. Thank you so much for watching. This is Leo, and as always, stay informed, stay secure.